Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Um, turnout is much more than we anticipated, so we're delighted to have lots of open air <coughs> plus um, faces, but also some new people in the audience as well to learn about our project. Um, I'm glad you all made it. First thing I want to say is th thanks very much to Nordbib who facilitated this for us. They provided us with a room with fantastic catering. If some of you have sampled the breakfast, we have coffee, lunch after this. So they've really pushed the boat out. And especially to Mikhail Kristofferson, who's um, helped and bent over backwards to ensure a smooth running of this workshop. And you can address any Nordbib related questions to him. Um, I'd also like to apologise. On Friday, we found out we accidentally sent a link. Instead of the ro to the Royal Library, it was to Funchal Airport in Madeira from Google Maps. So I really hope that half of Madeira is not filled with Nordbib um, um, representatives, but <laughs> it's, a, it's probably a bit warmer there than here. But um, glad to see a majority of you are here anyway. Um, I'd also like to introduce Inga. Uh, from the University of Ghent, from the Open Air and Open Air Plus project, who's going to be moderating after I speak, and she's going to be keeping us to very strict timing because we have a fairly tight schedule today to get through all the things we want to. So keep the coffee break fairly limited, and you'll have lunch and later to, to network and socialise and, and talk to each other. This is the first of four workshops um, in the Open Air Plus project. I'd like to announce that we have the second one coming up at the end of January in Portugal on interoperability. Um, the third one on linking research outputs in Belgium at the end of May. And the fourth one on legal and sustainability issues in Lithuania at the late 2013. The dates are not fixed yet, but we'll keep you posted, so keep in touch with us and we'll push the information out to you when we have exact dates and more information about them. Um, it seems that no open access event these days is, is complete without a quote from Neely Cruz, so uh, she sums up things so, so well and the essence of what we're trying to do. Um, sharing data and having the forum to openly use and build on what is shared are essential to science. And this, in a sense, gives us a good grounding in where we're trying to go in Open Air and Open Air Plus. Um, the essence that the researcher and all the data that they accumulate to get to the open access publication is equally important and valid. Um, and we need to be able to have a forum um, to, to exchange this. And in a sense, this data should be open, it should be accessible, it should be findable and visible. So with that in mind, we're having a workshop on data policy. We know that research data is important. And Open Air, as I'll tell you, Open Air Plus is going to start linking open, Air, open access publications to data. But we have, an, we have a community in Open Air who need to be educated um, about data issues. Um, and data has to be managed, and that's very important. Alongside management also comes policies. Now, they could come from the top, from funding level, or they could come from institutional level. And today we're going to hear more about these policies to give you in, in the community more of an understanding and awareness and overview. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Open Air Plus. Uh, then we have Oya, who's going to be talking about the data landscape and how data is important within research communities. Uh, we're going to be looking at enhanced publications, what we're, the technical side of things, what we're trying to, uh, what we're going to achieve in, in Open Air Plus. Publishing data from the researcher's perspective and within a specific life sciences community. And then two um, examples of policies, both from an institutional perspective. Um, Mary McDarby from Manchester, who's, who's been building her policy uh, within, within her institution and from a large funding perspective in the UK. So just to recap on what Open Air is, um, it's a European Commission funded project, 27 countries, so 26 member states plus one. Um, it started in 2009, it's running for three years. Uh, what we're doing is supporting the European Commission um, in its open access pilot. So um, within FP7, there are seven thematic areas. And there is a mandate, it is, yes, a mandate, it is obligatory for every um, publication output from these seven thematic areas um, has to be uh, deposited in open access. Um, it, either in an open access repository, which is then brought into the open air information space, or deposited directly into open air. So in essence, there's an accumulation of a vast body of open access publications within a certain funding stream. So making them visible and, and um, 
and findable and usable and open. Um, what's special about it is that each of these publications is, is associated with uh, the funding information. So in a sense that gives the EC an ability to, to really see the, the usability and the statistics um, on, these, on these publications. And on top of that we're building services, so we already have an existing portal where users can deposit and researchers can find and access these publications. Open onto, uh, onto Open Air Plus, um, again, uh, another European Commission funded project is very similar in its structure. We've widened our country base. We started in December. Um, in many ways, it's like a continuation of Open Air, and the initiative and the brand, so to speak, will always be Open Air. Pro open Air Plus is sort of the terminology for the actual project. Um, we're expanding and we're in, expanding our, the scope of open air. We're moving beyond FP7 publications to, to more publications, as I'll explain. And we're doing something very special here. We're introducing the concept of linking. And we're going to link from publications that we have in our information space out to data sets. So we're not managing data sets. We're not responsible for that. But we're bringing together the... The, the research landscape, so to speak, by, by providing a linkage and putting information into more context. We're also linking to funding information beyond FP7, so we're going to facilitate, facilitate that to give other funding parties the ability to see the impact of their open access publications. Um, and above all, we want to move more from a project environment to, um, to a service, to a service for users and a sustainable service for the future. Those are the main activities. This is us, we're 41 of us, a huge amount of us. Um, I first walked into an open air AGM, I couldn't believe it. I was totally stunned that it's a huge, <coughs> vast range of breadth and expertise and knowledge. So it makes for a really rich information environment and above all, a European wide information environment. So I think some of you might have seen this slide. It's a, it's a really good way of encapsulating what we're doing. As I explained, we're a publication infrastructure. We're a network of repositories of, of open access publications, cross discipline as well, not just in one disciplinary, disciplinary area. Now, in the research landscape where we're placing ourselves, there are also many other uh, data infrastructures, many other experts there who are pushing um, and providing supports for data. So there's the S3 projects, uh, Clarin, da Daria, which are very disciplined, specific focused research infrastructures, uh, providing the, uh, the, the, the infrastructure for them. Um, there's OIDAT um, and the things like Jant that really push the um, the data uh, support network for data and what we're going to do in in open air plus is, is neatly try to link these together so that it's it's covering all of knowledge so to speak this is our happy scientist on a very early monday morning in copenhagen i thought i'd try to visualize a little bit for the new partners what we're trying to do um, she's very happy she's just published um, her mouse genome publication and um, she's deposited it in open access uh, in a repository in her institution. Now, because her institution is open air compliant, it immediately is harvested into our information space. So this is open air. This is the sort of concept of where we are. It's open access publications going into our information space via open access repositories. What you don't know about her is that she's also spent 20 years researching um, the material for this open access publication. This is a huge amount of data behind this. Data sets, it could be small graphs, it could be videos, interviews, um, a lot of varied different information that could be very interesting for you to know as well or any other researcher. There might be project information within her university information system, within her CRIS. So there's all kinds of interesting information that... Um, that would contextualize this piece of this final publication. If she puts her uh, data set into her institutional repository or indeed to a thematic institutional repository, what we're going to do is harvest the metadata for that on a very simplistic level. That's, we're bringing that information into our information space. If she doesn't have an institutional repository um, or, or open, a, a open access repository for her publication, she can place that within our orphan repository that we also have within our open access infrastructure. Um, and then she can go into our system and create the links between these. She can tell Open Air Plus, this is my publication and this is my associated research data. 
So in a way, it's bringing together these two, these two pieces, uh, many pieces of the puzzle and information to produce basically a much richer experience for the user up here who's getting information from these different sources. Um, the user will also be able to get information about legal issues and licensing issues to reuse the data set. Are they allowed to reuse it? Is it allowed? Um, and we have a legal team within the project who are going to produce a study on um, the licensing issues for, for, data, for databases and, and data sets. Um, they'll also be able to get information about the different funding sources beyond FP7. So that sort of encapsulates, I hope, in a visual way what, where, where we're heading. And the most important thing is that this information over there will be made more visible for the user. In other words, it, it could be locked away, may not be visible, it's now searchable and accessible. Um, there are three parts of the, of the Open Air Plus project. I'm not going to go much in detail, I'll give you a flavour of what they're going to do. We have the technical team who are doing the hard work of building up the infrastructure and providing the uh, mechanics behind linking the publication and the data. The networking team who do the outreach and really try to bring in as many users as possible and explain to them the, the benefits of open access. And the services team who are now pushing out and really providing good functionalities and um, services for for users when they come to our portal. Technical, we've got technical people with us today. We have Paolo Mangi from CNR, who's, um, who's sitting in the front row. We have Natalia in the back row, who's at the University of Athens, who also um, does a lot to, to, power, to, to push forward the technical work on the team. So um, just a brief overview of the technicalities within here. I just thought I'd show you the different kinds of data sources that we're going to be working with in the open air. Um, uh, information environment. We have here publications and the metadata of publications. Those are text repositories. So we're going to be opening up to all the driver repositories, uh, nearly 300 uh, validated repositories that we're bringing into our system. Um, we then have projects and funding information. Uh, we're going to bring that in from the EC, that's FP7 and other beyond FP7, and also national metadata, other metadata schemes. Um, um, project information could also come in from the CRIS systems and we're working on being Serif compliant. Licensing information from the legal studies will also come into our information space to be able to, to link to data sets and tell you if you're, how, what the legal implications are of reusing this information. And last but not least, data sets and the metadata of the data sets, indeed, not, not just not the actual data sets, but in most cases just the metadata, and these will come from data repositories. Um, we have open air guidelines for linking your open access repository to um, our information data space, exposing the content, so to speak. Those exist. Um, we're also working in Open Air Plus on making guidelines for data providers. So there's a team of experts in our team um, analyzing minimum metadata requirements for hooking data repositories up um, to, our, to our information space and exposing their content so that we can easily harvest it. This is not an easy task and we're looking at all kinds of different data sources in order to, to put um, a, a metadata scheme together that's flexible um, and easy for people to comply. Down here in terms of data repositories, some of the first initial work we're doing is with uh, three discipline-specific communities, and we have them all represented here in this room. British Atmospheric Data Centre, um, Atmospheric Data, um, Data Archiving Network Services. Ariane's here is going to be talking about enhanced publications. They deal with social sciences. And we have European Bioinformatics Institute, who uh, Joe will be talking about the life sciences. So what we're doing is we're building a cross-discipline infrastructure and that does not easy uh, to build a generic infrastructure uh, for that. There's not a one-size-fits-all, so to speak. So we have to really examine different disciplines in terms of how they deal with data. Um, and what we're doing in particular is we're examining, we've, we've done some site visits and we're examining the different ways they work with data. So that certainly data is very heterogeneous, they have different, different data types. Um, we want to look at things like citation and the different metadata schemes they have. And above all as well, we're interested in the social point of view, how, how users uh, within the scientific domains interact with that data um, so that we can get an overview and, in, and, and make an in, a sort of example of an enhanced uh, publication but with a good background of how different dis disciplines do this. So that's another, another area. And these prototypes 
um, will be available soon um, towards the end of this year. And, and these are the people we're, we're piloting bringing the first initial data into our system with. We're also looking for other collaborators, of course. Outreach, this is um, where I come uh, into play. This is the University of Göttingen um, heads us, and we've, re we've met uh, Norbert Loss Lossau at the beginning, and Birgit Schmidt is also my colleague. So that's uh, in terms of who, how we're set up. Um, map of Europe, we're pretty much Europe-wide. This is all of you in terms of the open air uh, people. This is really a community of knowledge about, uh, about open access, and it's European-wide, and that's very special. It makes us very unique, so we can really spread the information across Europe. Um, what they're doing at the moment in the open Open Air project is, is um, giving support about open access um, and really promote, promoting it within their regions. We have a current help desk, we're going to be expanding that in Open Air Plus. Um, so that's helping researchers, providing workflows and, and, and promoting the system and um, uh, assisting uh, researchers deposit and, and search for, for publications and data sets. Um, so within this, we're, we're reaching out and we're looking to collaborate with other players in the sort of research uh, in, in environment um, and infrastructure environment. Um, we work with the Confederation of Open Access Repositories uh, to, to help us because that's also a, a community of open access repositories. So we work closely with them. The way we're set up is in four different regions and they're all here in the room today. Um, so their offices, so number one is Minho in Portugal. We have Pedro and, and Eloy. Pedro is over there. Is Eloy here? Yeah. So they're... Um, that's the, that's the, they, they manage the, the region south. Um, number two is region west, Ghent, um, Inga and Gwen. If you could put your, <laughs> Gwen's also here. Uh, they ma manage uh, region <coughs> west. Uh, region north is Mikael um, in Denmark. And uh, I think you're familiar with, um, with him and because uh, he's also been uh, managing, setting up this this workshop. And the third region is, where's Irina? Yeah. <laughs> Irina, who you'll see as well, <laughs> in the Ukraine. So that's uh, geographically how we manage ourselves. We carried out a data survey at the beginning of the project just to see what, the, in terms of what data was out there in, the, in, 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 our, in all our partners, what sort of issues they had, and also what, um, what they actually had in terms of repositories and policies. Um, we have missing data, and not everybody completed the survey, but what I can tell you is there's a, there's a trend, so to speak. So 16% of our partners have an institutional repository, 16% have a data policy, uh, slightly more on the data policy policy at funding level, that's 24%. So, of course, there's a lot more work to be done. There's a lot of uh, awareness raising about institutional data repositories um, um, in there because there's, there's, a, there's, there's a lack of them in, in many of the countries. Um, we need to identify these repositories, um, and once we have, we might even bring them into our information space. So we need to be aware of what's happening. And we're willing to compare results with other organisations who are doing a survey of institutional um, data repository landscape. Training will also be part of what we do in outreach. Uh, we want to train the open air community, but we might look to train further to train researchers as well and librarians. Um, we piloted an event back in, in Göttingen uh, back in April uh, with some real scientists who were quite interested in open air plus and they asked about questions like is cit data citation important, is it as important as citing my publication and they had questions about licensing schemes for data because they were confused about that, they didn't know that there were certain licensing schemes out there that could use CC BY and so on. But uh, a lot of them were not very willing to share their data at the beginning of their career, especially. Um, uh, you know, I'll publish my paper and I'll share the data maybe two years down the line. Basically, I don't want to do it now. Um, I'll be scooped and I'm, I'm frightened of sharing my data. Um, some of them said they were just powerless to achieve open access and that sort of felt sad to hear somebody say that. So we need to do more advocacy in, in pushing open access with them. And we need to do more work and, and really make this all relevant for them. And as Neve from the um, Trinity College Dublin said, we have to win their hearts and minds and make it very clear to them why sharing um, is good and open is, Im is important. And it could lead to better research uh, community for us all if they share. 
uh, one of them emailed me afterwards and he said, forget PDFs, imagine an e ideal publication where you click on tables to get through to raw data, where you can discuss and later update a paper in subsequent versions. The latter is similar to Wikipedia, actually. So that sort of says that what we're doing now is, is good and we're definitely going in the right way, but we should be careful and we should be aware of where scientists, future scientists, are going in terms of social media. And in fact, we're starting to talk to, in terms of publications, Mendeley, we're looking out to Figshare and see where the possible collaborations are with social media. I'm sure there'll be a heated discussion about that afterwards. Um, we're working on dissemination material, specifically targeting this to stakeholders, um, newsletters for our community, and we really now have to work on, on targeting, the stakeholder, targeting it to specific stakeholders. So I can't give you a general brochure about Open Air Plus. There should be, I think, specific areas to, to, bring, in, to bring people in and engage them uh, to, use our, to use our service. On to services. This is our portal that exists. Um, I'm just hot off the press. I've just... Um, heard that um, overnight from 3,000 publications to 27,000 in our information space um, we've just brought in so we can now you can now search a huge amount of publications open access publications in open air so well down well done to the technical team who've been working all all night on that um, so services in terms of the user they can search for publications they can get statistics on publications <coughs> They can deposit their files and they can deposit data files and the metadata, <coughs> metadata for the data files, more importantly, into our orphan repository if they need to. And then eventually they'll be able to make these links between the publication and the data. We have help desk, which we plan to expand in Open Air Plus, so watch out for that. That'll be a big part of the services area and in terms of other users these repository managers um, we already have uh, repository managers for data but now we will have repository managers for um, sorry repository managers for publications now we're opening for um, data repository managers will also be providing content into our system and the good thing this is it'll be a two-way agreement we've been work setting up workflows with pub publishers and any data provider where we can um, text mine or mine get the informa information out not just fp7 but publications beyond fp7 so we're really building up the information and it works if, if the, pub the publisher knows then we can send the information back to say these are, these are the FP7 publications within, within, your, uh, within all of your publications. So they can benefit from that as well. Third party, there will also be, able, there'll be an API which they can um, uh, find information from, from our information space. And finally data curators who will be within our system who will be um, building up the links and, and, and adding citations, they'll be within open air doing that um, and, and creating an enhanced publication. So that's a, um, a light overview of, 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 the, uh, of the work the services area is going to be pushing into into the future. So um, that's all I have to say. I'm coming to the end. Steve Hitchcock um, in a blog that was pointed out to me, or <coughs> interesting, uh, it wasn't a blog, I think it was an article actually he wrote the other day, it said, for open access repositories, technology and infrastructure preceded policies. First impressions are that for data repositories, this will be the other way around. Um, just out of interest in this room, could you put your hand up if you work in an institution with a data management policy? Uh, <laughs> So I think there are about 70 in this room, and I think f four people have, have put their hands up, so well done you. But um, th there's some more work to be done in terms of building uh, data policies, and this is the aim of today. But remember that we're only linking to data repositories. We're not managing data in our information space. But in th that said, you need to be able to understand some of the key um, messages in terms of the data landscape and how we're going to link it. And it'll be good to have examples of policies here in our talks um, and in our breakout sessions, uh, uh, we will have on the back of your sheets, if you could start to think now at this stage, before you hear the talks or while you hear the talks, which group you'd like to be going into, um, this is your chance to ask the experts, to ask the speakers. If you're totally confused, you can raise all your questions then. Um, and you can also please uh, uh, give your expertise as well. So we have five different breakout groups and they will be explained later. So keep an eye um, on which group you might like to attend. So that was a very quick, brief overview. I hope I didn't speak too fast. Um, do follow us on your social medium of choice, social network medium of choice. And if you have any questions, do email or ask me or ask the team that I have introduced.
over the course of the 20 minutes. So I'm going to hand over to Inga.